Happy Facebook Live Wednesday. Today's topic touches my soul because I had to learn the hard way regarding the importance of mental health versus the importance of academics. As an educator, as a student who always strived to get a high GPA, always thought that if you got good grades, right, it increased your self-worth, which means it would also increase your chances of success. How do you react to bad grades? If your child brought home a C, a D, or an F, does that define your worth as a parent? And are you embarrassed or do you feel frustrated when you see those grades, right? Well, when we teach kids from a young age to fear failure, to fear or avoid making mistakes, and to fear pretty much being imperfect, it creates so much stress to the point where it affects our mental health, right? It affects our self-esteem and it just affects our who we are. It defines who we think we are. So I know that I've been guilty of praising the good grades, meaning when you have a bad grade, which is what? Sometimes a D, sometimes I have parents who, you know, we do not get Bs in this family. Or if you get an 88 or 80, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, an 88, that's not an a, an A. So if you define your self-worth and you define your child's self-worth based on academic grades, accolades, accomplishments, what are we teaching our children? This is what happens in my eyes. I've been talking to a lot of parents um, the past year and, and a lot of children who cry and share their stress with me. You don't understand, Miss Karen. If I get a C, I get my phone taken away and I'm basically told that, you know, I'm just not worth anything if I don't get the right grades. And that just breaks my heart. Because what happens is if you teach that to your children, that academics must be a priority. And granted, I'm not saying that academics is, you know, something that we shouldn't focus on. But because of the pandemic, because of the stress of kids, right, we have more and more teens, one in five suffer some type of health, a mental health issue. It could be anxiety. It could be depression, even social phobias, needing to conform, needing to be accepted and dealing with bullying or just feeling that they are not part of the norm. I know Chelsea, my youngest, struggled with anxiety and the need to be perceived as smart. So she did get a bad grade if she um, failed a test. She really internalized it and I think I was meant to see this because I, I would not have, I think, become so passionate about helping parents see the importance of your child's mental health versus the need for academic achievement. I've talked to parents who just, you know, really thrive on sharing their child's high test scores or their child's, you know, soccer accomplishments or sports or just achievements in general. And they, I think, are living vicariously through them. You have two different types of parents, I notice. If they are high achievers, then they expect their children to follow their footsteps, right? If you were a soccer player or say um, a, um, you know, you're, you're into ice skating, you're into um, whatever it is. For me, it was academics. So when my eldest started tutoring, you know, I was like, wow, she's a little educator. And she said she idolized me and she wanted to become like me. Then I'm finally realizing that children, your children want your approval. They want your acceptance and they want to feel unconditionally loved. I had a 14 year old boy recently share, you know what, the video games being taken away doesn't hurt as much as me disappointing my mother. That was a big aha moment for me, that your kids just want your approval. So if your approval consists of getting the grade and being punished, right, whatever consequence, what you're teaching them is to become an adult who needs the right job, the right income, the right relationship, 
the right external source. Your self-worth is based on external circumstances. So if you lose your job, you get divorced, you um, don't feel happy because you didn't get what you put on your, your goal list, your dream board, then your self-worth diminishes each time you do not achieve what you set out to do. So I, you know, wanted to be, um, I wanted to be in marketing. So when I became the marketing director of the Hawaii State Bar, I thought, okay, I guess I'm a success. And then when my marriage ended, my first marriage ended, I thought, well, I'm a failure. Then I changed careers and I thought I was a quitter because I totally left the marketing corporate world and became a teacher. Then I quit teaching and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm a failure because I left a job that provided me with vacation days and, you know, security. And then I decided to branch out on my own. And each time I made money, I was a success. Each time I lost money, I was a failure. And then when I worked with kids and parents, I'm realizing, you know, are you going to allow your child to create their own legacy or are you influencing them about their choices? I asked someone, a 17 year old, are you making your choices based on what you want or what your parents want? And he paused and he said, Miss Karen, I don't know. I've only been taught to please my parents or else I'll get punished. I thought, wow. So I said, you know, you're, you are not defined by grades. You are not defined by your successes or failures. And your self-worth is not defined by what happens outside of you. And he says, can you tell my dad that? Unfortunately, I, I cannot force parents to be open-minded. You know, I can just suggest it. But not feeling good enough, disappointing you, right? Your child does not want to disappoint you, but they don't feel they're good enough if they don't meet your expectations. And they struggle with fatigue, they struggle with low self-esteem, and they escape. They might escape playing video games, they might escape watching YouTube, engaging in just social media because it's an escape and they do not want to face the pain of disappointing you as a parent. And so I thought, you know, what can we do? If prioritizing grades limits our ability to learn, research shows that if you emphasize grades being important, it hurts academic motivation and inhibits learning. When I look back, I got my A's because I was promised $20 for every A. Six A's, $120. Plus I loved being seen as smart. And I did it all for the wrong reasons. I did not learn anything. I knew how to memorize, get a good grade, and then purge, memorize again, get a good grade. And you're almost doing it as a robotic approach to feeling self-worth. So then I go to UH, I get a C on my first paper. I cry and cry and cry because grades define my self-worth. So my little message today during this Facebook Live is don't emphasize grades because when we do, we inhibit their curiosity for learning and we put so much emphasis on what their self-worth will be defined. After grades, it's going to be the right job, then it's going to be a promotion, it's going to be buying the right house, meeting the right person. And so if any of those fall, meaning their job is lost, pandemic, a lot of relationships ended because of the quarantine, right? Just not knowing how to navigate a relationship when you're based on being stuck with each other and not being able to escape and, and live a separate life. Not a separate life, but you know what I mean. You're able to just socialize with other people. No, we were like imprisoned with our spouse or our children. And a lot of us thought, do I really like my significant other? But if we find our self-worth from within, your whole outlook changes. Chaos can happen, but you remain calm inside. I'm not saying you're not going to struggle because emotional, mental, and emotional struggles are part of life, but you will have your inner strength to rely on because your self-worth 
is not defined by external circumstances. My soul sister, Deathlin Hakias, reminded me, you are worthy just because you exist. That was a new one for me. I thought I was only worth it if I got approval, right? If I made money and if I did the right things. And now I'm learning we don't need any of this outside, um, you know, the accomplishments. Your child needs academic achievements. Do they need the right accolades, you know, the right awards and trophies and scholarships and the teacher's approval, their peers' approval, their parents' approval. It's a lot of stress. We have higher suicide rates among young, young people. We have higher depression rates. Nulani High School had an article on how they were um, surveying students and one in five suffer from some form of mental health issues, whether it's anxiety, whether it's you know depression, or whether it's even some form of um, social phobia where they don't want to be around people. And I can relate to that. I don't know if you can. You just don't want to be around people, which is hard when you have to work and be around people, right? So what do we do? What can we do? My suggestion is have your child talk about their feelings. I notice when I try to even talk to my husband about feelings, um, it's very uncomfortable. I don't know if it's just even, it's, it's not a gender thing, but you are uncomfortable talking about emotional pain. None of us want to embrace it, which means if you suffer, suffer, you're not really embracing failure. You view failure as a negative emotion rather than embracing it and seeing it as an opportunity to grow, to build resilience, and to know that you want to fail because otherwise you will not grow. I just learned that recently, even after reading The Gift of Failure, even after, you know, just researching, like we need to embrace failure, I still, hey Mickey, thanks for watching. I still judge myself if I failed as a mom. Do we fail as a mom? Can we fail as a parent? The only way that you fail as a parent is an internal mindset that you set a standard, whatever it is. My child needs to fill in the blank. Get good grades, behave, make me proud, whatever it is, right? If your child embarrasses you, disappoints you, or doesn't live up to your expectations, then you fail as a parent. I felt like I failed as an educator because I couldn't motivate my child. Whenever a child or a student, if I didn't understand their academic homework, I was a failure, right? If they succeeded, then I would succeed. So my self-worth totally tied to external circumstances. So I researched it. There are a hundred ways that we can on a daily basis provide your child with opportunities to nourish their mental health rather than nagging them. And we think by nagging, well, we call it like maybe reminding them and it's on repeat, right? You remind, you repeat, and then you just get really upset because how many times do you have to remind them? How many times do you have to put it on repeat? Stop reminding. Stop feeling the need to lecture and just guide and trust in your child's journey. Maybe their failure will be such a huge transformation and they will learn something so priceless and valuable that grades cannot give them. And I am all about, I was all about grades and it's really hard for me to, um, to watch parents suffer when they see those grades go down, right? It's like, oh my gosh, my child is, is he stupid, lazy, unmotivated? What is wrong with my child? Guess what? Nothing is wrong with your child. We need to fix our mental mindset because there is nothing wrong with your child. But your child is learning to feel that something is wrong with them. If they don't get the right grade, if they don't get into the right college, if they don't get the right job. My eldest, um, you know, lost her job, applied job after job after job after job, rejected after, right, rejection, rejection. And only recently she said, you know, mom, relationships don't define me. 
my career does not define me. So who am I? Big wake up call. Who are we? You're not your your parent, you're being a mom or a dad, or um, you know, your career doesn't define you, your house doesn't define you, your financial status doesn't define you. So who defines what defines you? I would like to offer that as uh, something to just reflect on. Um, and then I don't want to turn this into a lecture. Is this sounding like a lecture? <laughs> I don't mean to. But I am so passionate about helping parents realize that we are creating unnecessary stress and sleepless nights and worrying about our child's future when you know what? You have zero control. I'm sorry, we have zero control. We don't have the power to ensure our child's success, whatever you define success, the academic grades, getting a good education, getting a good job, you know, having that financial security, it's not in your hands. Someone shared, a, I want to do a quick story before I tell you five ways that you can help nourish your child's mental health. Um, he shared that he met someone, um, Stanford graduate, um, played, um, you know, she was a pianist and she played her, you know, played the piano for money in France, just very, very successful in everyone's eyes. But according to her parents, she was never good enough because they wanted her to climb that success ladder. She suffered from anxiety. She suffered from depression. And my friend was in a relationship with her for about a year. And he didn't realize um, he was a naturopath. And he thought, you know, why are we killing ourselves mentally by striving for these ladders of success when we have it inside is truly a mental issue, right? Because you can get the grades, get the job, get the perfect, well, you think it's a perfect relationship, right? Um, get the financial abundance, whatever you strive for, and then you find yourself feeling empty. Why is that? Because we're placing our self-worth on external just anything external will fluctuate. What happens if your relationship is in, you know, ends or you're just experiencing rocky, rockiness, right? Because no relationship would be perfect. You're unhappy because your boss is irritating you. You're working long hours. I have a college classmate who just recently got COVID and was in the hospital for 42 days. And he said, you know, Karen, I got, I was VP of marketing. I did the financial abundance thing, but I'm realizing all these decades made me very unhappy, very stressed out and led to multiple health issues, which ended in COVID. He is healing, but still needs oxygen periodically. And he thought, what did I do with my life? You know, he's going to be, he's like in his late fifties. And I thought, wow. I'm 56, I want to just let you guys know that you have it in you as a parent to either nourish your child's mental health or damage your self-esteem. When you damage a child's self-esteem, you are preventing them from blossoming from what their natural, what would you say, their natural journey because you're telling them, hey, you got to get the good grades. You are being lazy. You are not being motivated. You're being pretty much, your words are saying that they're crappy, right? That's not a good message to send your child. So what can we do? Talk about feelings, even if they don't want to. I've been, I've been having discussions. I think my oldest is more open-minded. She's, you know, lived more, 24. The 18-year-old, is still learning. I can see those those wheels turning. She didn't have a really good um, first semester. She decided to, well, she didn't decide to, but she was paralyzed. So she failed. And I was embarrassed because I'm an educator. And I thought, why aren't you motivated? Why aren't you doing what you're supposed to do? And I thought, you know, Chelsea, you are helping me so much because this failure is something to embrace, not to be embarrassed because you are resilient you enrolled again, you're working part time, you're an essential worker, you went through the, you know, the pandemic graduation, um, overcame a lot. But if you focus on your failures, you feel like a loser. 
You feel like you are the failure. If your child fails, they're not a failure, but we are giving that message to them. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm gonna be, get off my soapbox. Allow time for play. Do not, um, I think our punishments, when we take away, and I'm not saying don't take away video games, it is a discipline, right? If your child is playing video games during distance learning, well, dive deeper and find out why. But yes, explain that video games will need to be taken away, but not as a punishment, maybe as a discipline. When you punish, you're shaming, you're blaming, and you're really ripping their self-esteem. And I know the old days, you know, lickens, rubber slippers, rubber, whatever it is, we were like, I'm going to show you painfully not to mess up. And then we grow up and we either perpetuate it or we think, wait a minute, I want to parent differently because I don't want to raise a child. Um, oh, neurotic energy. I thought, wow, what a great term. We are creating neurotic energy when we punish through shaming and blaming and damaging self-esteem. Allow time for play. This one, I'm learning, listen first, talk second. Allow your kids to feel that what they have to say is important. If they don't feel important, guess what? They feel that you are talking to them, you know, right? You're condescending, you're making them feel like they're the, the ones that are, they need to listen to you. Kind of like a dictatorship, right? If you're in my house, you need to listen to what I say because, hey, I pay the bills, you are in my house, I know better than you. Do we really know better than them? I've been a parent for 24 years. I still don't know how to be a parent, but I want to be a parent coach. Sometimes I think I should end my parent coach journey, but my passion is so strong. So I'm going to hang in there a little bit longer. Tell your child what you love about them. Do we do that? You see, I love you. I love your sense of humor. I love how you find it so exciting to win at video games. That's the, like a curiosity that I can't understand, but wow, good for you that you found something that makes you happy and nourishes your soul. What is it about video games that you find so, um, it serves you purpose maybe because you win? What is that feeling of winning? It's increasing the self-esteem. I talked to two boys, two teenagers, and they thrive on video games. They said it is the strategizing. It is, um, you know, communing because they are work, they are being a part of a team. So then when they win, especially a challenging, um, whatever it is they do, right? They win. And if they're the ones who take their team to um, overcoming a challenge, it's such a high. It's a natural high that doesn't require alcohol drugs and um you know an addiction of some sort right i think a lot of women we you know like shop online or we find our sense of um purpose we don't have a sense of purpose so we shop we eat we um, binge watch guilty of all three right because we don't know how to have self-worth inside of ourselves. so i'm sorry for lecturing um, but i just wanted to um share that you know that we need to allow your child to create their own journey create their own legacy create their own passion find their own passion if we are dictating what they should do we are robbing them from their journey that they are meant to travel so let them navigate let go and watch them soar watch them blossom and watch them love you if you dictate and you rob their joy, I know a lot of adult children who say, I don't want to be around my parents because I just don't feel good around them and they'll just tear me down. So I want to emotionally connect with my child because I want them to come back to me, you know, when you're when you're older and you don't have a job, you're retired, um, you want your children to want to spend time with you, right? So that is um, my my little Facebook Live. Do not, do not believe. I know it's hard. Change that mindset that if your child doesn't get decent grades, they will not have a decent life. Let's try to change that mindset. And, you know, stop teaching our kids to fear failure. I know I sound like a record, broken record, but we really need to embrace failure and see the gift of failure.
It doesn't have to be even failure, just not living up to your expectations. And here's my candle as a reminder. Take time to breathe today. Enjoy your Wednesday. And thanks for watching. Bye.